Hallelujah. Romans chapter 11, verse 36 says this. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. The title of this series is May It Be Unbroken. The reason that we call the series that is because there is a circuit relationship that that particular passage of scripture lays out. Romans eleven thirty six 36 shows us like a circuit from him, through him, and to him. This is the verse that shows us this circuit relationship. And it too often gets broken based on our involvement in the circuit. So in this particular series, we're gonna break each one of these down and this week's uh, message is called From God. From God, all things come from God. And I don't know if we have a slide that has that circuit on it, but I know that the graphic kind of shows that. There's a connection that happens from God through Jesus and to man and back up. Here it is. God through Christ, through man, and back to God. And what's not on there is something that we need to emphasize, and that is the Holy Spirit's involvement in us. He is in us, reminding us of Jesus, the scripture says, empowering us to be witness, the scripture says, and, it, and the Holy Spirit is also in there praying on our behalf. It says groanings deep within inside of us when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit is interceding on our behalf from God through Christ and then back to God. And God has put us in that circuit and we carry an opportunity in this relationship. But all things come from God, and this is a major foundational block that we can live on. This shows an emphasis on the authority that is God. From God, this is saying these things all come from him. It should always allow us and empower us to look up and to remember from where these things are flowing from. But if you're going to get excited about that truth, so if I say from God, and maybe you don't get excited about that because you don't know who God is, or you haven't really gotten into a study to try to understand what he's about. It's kind of like if I said, hey, I have a gift from Eric. If you don't know Eric, you don't know what that means. Maybe Eric gives really great gifts, and you'd say, ooh, we got a gift from Eric. I know Eric, this is gonna be great. Or I know Eric and he's cheap. This is not gonna be a good gift. So we're gonna get excited about this truth that all things come from God, then we really need to understand who God is. And if we can grasp the understanding of who God is, then we can really get excited about this truth. So let's look at 1 John chapter four, seven through nine. And this gives us an insight on who God is. It says, beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God. I'm going to read that part again. For love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, the love of God was manifest in us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. A little insight to next week. You see the relationship there. God sends love. It's from him. And not only does it just come from him, he can never run out of love because it says he is love. That's like me looking at you saying, be 
less human or you're going to run out of human. You're never going to run out of human because you are human. So God's love never runs out. His love never fails. His love is perfect. And the reason that his love is perfect is because he is love. Let that settle in. It's perfect and it's endless because it's him. So God is love. For some in this room, you would say, okay, God is love, that's fine. But some of you would say, I haven't really had a good interaction with love in my life. Some of you would say, I never really had a good example of love in my life. So when I say love to some of you, you say, that means nothing to me. Only my career has ever given me anything. Only, only I have given myself things. People have just let me down. So I'm just, I'm just getting mine. I'm just getting money. I'm just getting career. I'm just getting advancement. Some of you don't know really what it means when I say God is love because you don't really understand love. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 through 7 says this. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love does not brag and it is not arrogant. So if that's happening in your life, you know that's not love. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness and unholiness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all all things. If you're here and you'd say, I haven't really had a good look at love. I've never really had anybody explain to me what love is outside of certain physical expressions or just getting extravagant gifts. That right there tells you that's love. Right there. If you ever wonder, if you ever doubt, if anybody's in your life and you're not sure, read it. Measure all things that you wonder about, measure all people that you're wondering about to that. Then when somebody says, I love you, let me check. Well, let's just see. When somebody says, I care for you and I got you this gift, well, that necklace doesn't actually do that. That car doesn't actually do that. My bills getting paid doesn't actually do that. So that's not love. It's an expression of care. It could also be an expression of manipulation. If you want to know what love is, that's love. And I'm going to tell you this. I believe, and you're going to get real used to me unpacking what that means, believe, in the future which I'm excited to be in this pulpit with you every week. But it says, I believe the Bible. This is what the scripture says. I believe the word of God. So when I say to you, I believe the Bible, I'm actually quoting the scripture. I trust truth. So the Bible tells me this is love. I believe it. And the reason that I believe it is because my adult life has been committed to that. It's been committed to him. And it has never failed me. And then I look back at my parents' life and I check my childhood and I check my parents' life. I check my neighbors who knew Jesus' life. I look at this stuff and I say, yeah, no, that, that, that really is love. He really is love. And because I have that, it helps me now to trust what I'm going through. God is there. It all works together. Who is God? What is love? Now, I'm not so beat down by my circumstances. Now, I don't feel the depression and the anxiety of uncertainty because he is certain. And this comes from him. Look at Matthew 7, 7 through 10. 
Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. But this is, this is the key. Now listen to this, and we can all understand this, especially those of us that are parents. We can understand this part. Or what man is there among you when his son asks for a loaf of bread? We'll give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? Think about that. All right, so now back it all the way up. God is love. From God is love. Love is amazing. It's all these guarantees. It's all these, it even tells us what it's not. That's very thorough. And so I can step in and say, okay, that means I can ask God for things. But if I ask God for bread, he's not going to give me rocks. If I ask him for a fish, he's not going to give me a serpent. But what happens when it looks like that? I'm just saying, we're going to get into this here in a second, but I want you to hear this. Love gives only beneficial gifts. Love gives only beneficial gifts. I did not say that's exactly what I wanted, gifts. I did not say that makes me happy, gifts. He gives me beneficial gifts. He doesn't give us things that are going to make us sick. He doesn't give us things that are going to hurt us. He doesn't give us things that are going to damage us. He gives us gifts that are beneficial for our life. The reason that he does that is because he is love. Then all things that come from him come from love and they will be good for you. They are good for me to receive. Even when we don't understand them. Let's look at this. This is Jeremiah 29.4. The backstory on this is Israel is now captive in Babylon, Okay. Jeremiah is sending him a message. Listen to this. It says, for I know, this is from God, from Jeremiah, through Jeremiah. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I love that. I just think about that. Like God, he thinks thoughts towards me. I love that. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and not a hope. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. Let me go back up. Wrong verse. One second. Thus says the Lord of hosts, God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive. Stop there. So God is talking about you've been carried away captive. You're carried away captive. He says, whom I have caused to be carried away. That's the crazy part. You've been carried away captive. Who I caused to be carried away. Now that could sound like, well, did I ask for bread and you gave me a stone? Did I ask for a fish and you gave me a snake? Why would you cause me to be carried away in captivity? It doesn't look like love right now. It's not the same thing. You ever do that? You ever give somebody a gift? And they're like, oh, that's exactly what I wanted. And then the next, they open up the next person's gifts. They're like, oh, that's nice. You're like, I guess it's not what you wanted. You know, you feel bad. You know, it's like, I didn't give them the great gift. You know, how many times do we give gifts that are really about us? Amen, right? We give gifts and hope for the person who loves our gift. It's not even about the person. God doesn't do that. God doesn't give you a gift to win a moment with you. He doesn't give you a gift to make you just smile for the moment and then be sad later. And here... He says, I've caused you to be carried away. Now drop down to verse 11. Sorry about that. It says, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So go back and read that chapter on your own. I don't have time to unpack the whole thing today, but go back and read that. What you're going to find is this. God put them in captivity because he was building their future. Trust me, as they are being hauled out of Jerusalem to Babylon, they were not thinking of good things about God. If they were, 
this letter would not exist. Jeremiah would not be writing and saying these things on behalf of God. It's because they were grumbling and sad and upset. And he's like, guys, listen, I'm thinking about you all the time. And this is happening because I'm giving you a future. I'm giving you a hope. I'm not giving you evil. If it comes from love, church, if it comes from God, if it comes from love, you can trust it even when you don't understand it. If it comes from love, I can trust it even when I don't understand it. Job 2, 9 and 10, you know, if you don't know the story of Job, Job went through, I mean, his, his situation is rough. Job went through some stuff. Job really went through some stuff. And I'm just going to pick one moment here in Job chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. It says, then Job's wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Listen to what her advice was. Curse God and die. Exclamation point. She didn't say, sweetie, just curse God. And just... She is proclaiming, this is my advice. This is my position. I am telling you, curse him and get it over with. Job says to her, shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? The advice from his wife was give up, it's too hard, abandon God. But when it comes to love, Job knew to trust even when he didn't understand. Teachers, do you make the kids do their homework or do you just let them sit around on their phones? Coaches, do you make your athletes train and work out or do you just let them show up for the games? Parents, do you make your children do chores or do you just let them sit around and sleep in and just have fun all the time? Hardships are necessary for development. Challenges are necessary to become who you are to be. Difficulties are necessary for shaping the entire person holistically. And a good father knows this. God will send these things so we can become who he's created us to be. So when you ask for bread, and sometimes it feels like a stone, trust. When you ask for a fish and it looks like a serpent, trust. Because the father is being a good father. I'm a father, but I'm not the father. Pastor Mark is a father. He's not the father. Pastor Carlos is a father. He's not the father. The father. He thinks in ways we don't think, and he acts in ways we don't act. We don't understand his ways. That's what he told us. He's like, you don't get it, but trust me. That's what the whole thing is about. If I understood everything God was doing, then I'd be God. If I could do everything that God was doing, I would be God. That's the relationship. If you ask for patience, he won't just add patience. He'll send a process for you to become a patient person. If you ask for strength, he won't just send you strength. He sends the process to make you a strong person. That's what a loving father actually does. So here's the big question, worship team, if you'd come. When you start thinking about that, and I know, you know, some people probably thought, oh, we're going to talk about all the happy, good things that come from God. Listen, they're in there. Healing. We, my wife got up here and shared testimonies of healing and job opportunities and salvations. And 
people came to the altars in our, in our services and at the Latino services, they're saying, I, I want the hope of what you're talking about. So I'm, I'm here to start that. I want to do that. That's awesome. But what really gets tough is when dad shows up and says, mow the lawn, paint the house. And you're saying, well, I don't, I'm tired. I want to sleep in. My friends are going to the river. That's when dad shows up. So it's not all bread and fish. So does God cause all the difficulties in our life? So now what's happening is, is we're all starting to think, we're all taking account, and we're all starting to wonder, man, what about the hard stuff? I mean, is that from God too? Listen, there is evil in this world. Choices are being made every second, and some of them affect your life. Free will does exist. So this verse is what's so important to go with what I taught. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So stop right there. When someone decides to act in an evil natured way towards you, God doesn't say, ah, if that was me, I wouldn't have done that. Oh man, I, I'm really sorry. Chin up kid. I'm still around. It's not what he does. Sometimes that's all I can do. I have people come down here every week. I have problems, pastor. I got major issues, pastor. Stay the course. Let me pray for you. God, according to Romans 8, God says, all right, it's repurpose time. This person did that to you. It was through the spirit of evil that they did this to you. I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm going to give it a new name and you're going to grow and you're going to advance and you're going to be more and you're going to be better. Even when that person tried to destroy you, not possible because I am your father. So even when it isn't completely orchestrated and written out by God, he repurposed, he gives it a new name. He took his son and allowed him to be tortured and nailed to a cross. And the disciples were scattered and everybody's like, we have made a mistake. I didn't understand. And God's like, hold on. I'm going to take death and use that to give you life. My wife is an amazing homemaker. She takes empty rooms and makes them home. I don't know how she does it. I just pick up the tool and say, tell me what to do. I don't know how she does it. You could look at Jesus for three years performing miracles and teaching brand new things. And these guys were just men and women following him, crawling through crowds, trying to touch his garment and all this. And next thing you know, he's being tortured and you're like, Something's off. And God's like, no, 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 no. This is what I do. I take what you don't understand. And I bring hope to every generation and every nationality and every person who will ever live. Your life has elements about it and events about it that you don't understand. Trust because the good father has thoughts towards you. Prayer team, if you could come to the altar, and I know we're going over a little bit today. And I've been 
the pastor of this church for about a year now. But today is my first day as the senior pastor of this congregation. And so the first thing that I wanna say to you is this, God loves you because he is love. And if you allow him to, he will take everything bad in your life and he will give it a new name. Bow your heads with me, church. Jesus, right now, I just pray you'd move upon the hearts and people in this room. And I pray, God, right now that you would begin to speak to them. I pray you'd fill people with the Holy Spirit. I pray, God, that those who don't know your son, Jesus, would call on his name right now. So with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if you don't know Jesus, I wanna introduce you to love today. There's people in this altar that will pray for you and tell you about the love of Jesus. If you need a healing, come forward and let the healer touch your body today. If you need a miracle in your life, come forward and let the miracle worker work in your life today. Everybody stand with me. Everybody stand with me, church. The worship team's gonna lead us in song. If you need salvation, come forward. If you need a healing, come forward. If you need a miracle, come forward. Today is your day to meet the good Father.